Uh, hello, so I'm Emily Cohen. I'm a first year PhD student at Northumbria. Um, so my paper uh, that I've written looks at non-real-time VR dance performances, such as um, examples being just Total Towns Theatre, Nightfall and Dust. And my paper compares VR dance works to traditional stage performances, uh, considering aspects of meaning-making, communication and engagement. Uh, uh, so VR offers novel up-close experiences and by doing so it separates the audience from the performer. Instead of uh, a live event it consists of two separate stages, creation and dissemination. Uh, so the, a performance delay is created and so the process is similar to that of making a film. The dance is transmitted indirectly and instead of varied repeated stagings it results in finalisation and uniform uh, dissemination. Uh, so a key feature of VR performances is that there's no shared presence of audience and performer. Uh, Veranda and Sanchez separately state how performing arts are arts of presence. They are ephemeral and that's what makes them different to a dead or inert reproduction. So just to read from my paper briefly, uh, presence can be described as the being there and the here and now of embodiment and a perpetual cognitive negotiation about our ontological state of being. In technology-mediated performances, since the audience is not present at the dancer's performance and the performers are not present at the audience's reception of that performance, the event, defined as a thing that happens or takes place, does not in fact happen or take place at any one given time or place. The performance is split between two different moments, recording and reception, and therefore it cannot be said to fully exist at either. In accordance with the aforementioned definitions, neither the dancers nor the audience occupy the same being here, or here and now, of the performance, which therefore calls into question the existence of the performance by it becoming a non-event. Uh, as technology um, divides audience and performer, it can argu arguably enhance each separate experience. So the dancer's experience can be enhanced by them being more exposed. Because the audience's focus is less directive and they have the freedom to look around the space where they choose, um, that means that each dancer is permanently centre stage. Uh, the dancers can be more immersed in their own performance because rather than projecting to many, they perform to one centre point, the camera, which could narrow their focus and could internalise them into their own movements more. And because they perform to a 360 degree camera, which could be seen as an impartial objective presence, especially when the camera is unmanned, um, they could become more involved in their own movements because they are in theory performing to no one. Uh, this last point presents an interesting dichotomy because they perform to no one, but they are also potentially performing to a lot of people. Um, so whilst becoming um, internalised in their isolation, they are also exposing themselves through broadcasting. So that's sort of two opposing experiences in one. Uh, likewise, the audience can be immersed in their separate experience because they are blinkered to their immediate surroundings by the VR headset. They become an unobserved observer and they can feel closer to the performers and more immersed through the interaction with the technology, which can give them a more enhanced experience. Uh, so technology offering 300 degree visuals, interactions, audience autonomy or personalised ex experiences can make the audience feel as though they're having a live and meaningful experience by giving the audience a feeling of presence and being there in the performance. However, because the audience engage with the technology's transmission of the performance rather than with the performance directly, the features of the technology could become more engaging than the performance content. Uh, I'm just going to show a video. So this is a uh, Dust Total Towns Theatre. It's just a trailer. Today we're going to film uh, 
VR ballet, um, I guess the first of its kind, so that's pretty exciting. Peter, the choreographer, uh, he had an idea of creating a light act. It's actually choreographed for the camera. It's kind of like a mashup between the white acts of ballet as a binary as well, like. En je moet je voorstellen dat je zo helemaal als kijker echt binnen in een ballet wereld stap. So the challenge was already to sort of make a planning that we felt like we build the world actually around the camera, as if the camera is the audience looking out from the point. Het gewoon thuis bekijken en om je heen en overal gebeurt van alles. Dat is echt zo weer midden in zich. It's really breathtaking. So I think the audience is going to experience something which is very, very beautiful and, and hopefully the fact that they can look around and have uh, some choice in what they look at will, will make it a unique experience. Uh, so that's just a bit of an insight into the, how they're sort of making the VR performance around the camera. Uh, just to reiterate, so the performance and audience have a separated presence. Uh, and they can be more immersed in their separate experiences, uh, yet perhaps they might be further removed from a meaningful engagement with each other. Uh, and there's another point, so the VR technology can be seen to justify its existence by providing novel ways of experiencing dance. Uh, as it intervenes between and disconnects the audience and performer, it is also the connecting medium through which they communicate, and thereby could be seen as providing a solution to a problem it has created. Uh, so moving on to the next section, which is performer perception. Uh, perception can be defined as a process by which an organism becomes aware of and interprets external stimuli and is the act of collecting information from the outside world. Uh, a key quote for me is perception as the process of attributing meaning and significance to the immediate situation. Uh, the notion of perception is important um, for dancers because they navigate space and time in order to convey meaning and significance to an audience. Um, so in VR performances, performer perception and control over the performance is removed to a distance. The performers suffer a sort of sensory impairment as there's no immediate feedback loop as there is in real time communication. So they are blind to the effects of their communication. Um, elements of the performance remain unknown because the performance has happened in the past. So aspects of the mediation of the story is outside of their control. Um, and so VR can be seen to intervene in the storytelling of the dancer. Uh, the audience being free to look wherever they are uh, perhaps makes VR more effective as an experience rather than the communication of a narrative story. Um, so VR as a, a medium may inadvertently prioritise the audience experience over the dance form. And this could be problematic for dancers as technology takes centre stage. Um, and so with um, perception described as the process of attributing meaning and significance to the immediate situation uh, means that for audiences they experience the VR headset and not the live presence of the dancers and so social significance is replaced with technological significance and for the dancers they perceive technology in their performance and so derive meaning and significance from that experience which um, points to an area of further study that might be of uh, more interest for me. Uh, dancers rely on trust and uh, risk, which in live perform performance results in elements of surprise and suspense. Uh, with VR performance, the element of risk is removed because the performance happens within the repeatable realms of technology, which provides a sort of safety net to the dancers, and so there is perhaps less surprise and awe for the audience. Uh, the varying flaws of the live performance are perfected, and so the technology speaks louder than the art form. Uh, just again for my paper. Uh, there is less risk and surprise when engaging with technology, as its automated, mechanised nature means that it performs and behaves in the same way with each rendition. Meaning can be expressed through dance in a myriad of different ways, because each body is unique, and so every manifestation of a dance conveys meaning differently. In VR dance performances, the forms of interaction with the technology can be the same across many pieces, resulting in repeated interpretations. Uh, so dancers negotiate space and time in order to convey meaning. So when the liveness of the performer is replaced by the liveness of technology, the communicative power of dance can be muted. Um, so technology can be seen as an intervening medium which expresses its own form of communication. Um, and when two different mediums are joined, it can um, become apparent how one medium can sometimes dominate the other. 
Uh, so moving on to audience immersion, final section. So Cronenberg states of the live music industry that though they may be scripted and choreographed, each performance is unique, a unique experience and that other attributes contribute to the event as much as the music the artist has performed. Uh, so this highlights the way in which traditional stage performances are immersive with the here and now of the live event and it's not just the choreography. Uh, so the traditional stage offers a social aspect of atmosphere and a buzz in the event experience and VR performance is immersive in that it constructs an immersive environment so it's sensorially immersive and transportive. Uh, this idea of immersion can be said to rely on place and plausibility illusions, the suspension of disbelief and an understanding of fiction. Uh, with both the stage and VR performances, uh, can come breaks into the in, and interruptions into the audience's immersion in the piece, such as distractions in their immediate surroundings and also the technology with the physical headset and glitches and feeling of nausea. So basically, immersion can be broken when the physical surroundings misalign with the immersive illusion. Um, it can be important um, with VR to understand the technology in order to make the illusion playable. Uh, the technology is the key communicator between performer and audience, and so understanding the technology is important for communication and meaning making. Uh, sometimes it can be important to understand any live elements in order for the audience to engage fully with the piece, and also be aware of how associations and functions of technology can sometimes hinder engagement. Uh, so by understanding the workings and relationships of technology, the audience um, can become more engaged and immersed in the unfolding of the piece as they submit to the illusion. Uh, also, the virtual performer audience relationship can affect audience immersion. Uh, technology gives the audience more autonomy um, and, it also, and it also gives them less accountability, which can result in feelings of insignificance. Um, the audience can't affect anything because the performance happened in the past and so that can generate a feeling of like powerlessness um, and also as an unacknowledged presence uh, the audience can be made to feel as though they are not really there. Uh, so it can be said that the stage and VR offer different types of immersion. VR offers an, an immersive environment and the stage of, offers immersive storytelling. So it can be said that VR offers internally focused immersion as the audience are more aware of themselves than their agency and the environment around them, uh, whereas the stage can offer more externally focused immersion as the focus is on what is being conveyed to them. Uh, the difference can highlight the different functions and per uh, purpose of like dance and VR as two different mediums um, and perhaps stresses the importance of producing VR experiences that offer more interaction and agency for the audience as opposed to documentation and passive observation um, of dance which perhaps would be more effective uh, on the stage. Uh, so just to my conclusion, uh, so my paper offers alternative perspectives in order to provoke further discussion on non-real-time VR dance performances, uh, covered audience performer experience and how the performer and audience are separated, uh, they don't have any shared presence and the performance can be reduced to a non-event. Uh, both performer and audience connect with the technology, uh, the audience feels closer yet further removed as they engage with the technology more than the performer and the performer performs to everyone and yet no one. Uh, with performer perception, the performer is removed from the performance, they have no presence and less control and therefore the power of communication is removed and the dance is muted and the technology then speaks louder than the dance for form. And then my last section about uh, audience immersion, uh, how technology can both enhance and hinder immersion and the stage and virtual reality offer different forms of immersion. Uh, so as two opposing mediums, dance and technology communicate in very different ways, uh, which is why VR and dance is such a fascinating topic to research, and I welcome any thoughts and discussions, and thank you. Very much. Thank you.